Gems of Goa season 3 I'm Alicia Fernandez well in today's episode we have uh, with us the ever smiling goan singer trumpeter musician and actress Veros Pereira Veros welcome to Prime TV's Gems of Goa thank you so much dear Veros for Alicia Veros to begin with first of all tell me what is the secret behind this smile of yours <laughs> I think it's um It's definitely the love of a go and people and um it's just what I do. I enjoy what I do. Mga folk mo music also so I guess it's that. Okay so now if uh, I think we have seen all your videos on YouTube we have seen you we're following you constantly on Instagram as well and I think uh, what is so beautiful is that your voice is just takes us into a different time and space. So if you could maybe uh, tell us about how exactly this thing started for you and what makes it so beautiful about uh, this wonderful journey of yours. Um uh, I come as you know, music kelle because of my father Avis Petra to theater to ata sadak prince gabak natsta and the YouTube channel baha but maka mog music acha laglo mujhe pai kone san because he was uh, singing for Doordarshan so I'm that tasana the jawara Doordarshan aru itale Then I started to uh, sing along with him in Doordarshan when I was seven. Poile kantara mi kelle sobit ko amron. My tingat sa na theater and joins are ita jabaru hori and mashi dakte dakte like kantara kutta ita jabaru and tingat sa moog mazo music a like you know regal tingat sa. Okay, so also when you see very closely like you know as you said you ha- it started from your dad. So was it like right from the start that you know you wanted to get into this field itself or was it like something else that you had in mind? because you never know like you didn't, wouldn't want like you know a doctor's child to be a doctor or you know an engineer's child to be an engineer yeah uh, for me i always loved music and football um mujhe sapna le the musician of football was up um so it was either one of those you know either one of those two and uh, football sang na mokone because i i don't think i was really that good mm-hmm. um and then music was something that i was more passionate about um something that i was better at so that's why i went for music and i think it was it was just the more feasible option as well <laughs> okay so there were like n number of uh, like you could say branches in music so but why only trumpet <laughs> and why why is it like we've always seen you in all your videos you have that one trumpet and i think you do an amazing job i must say when you're singing with a trumpet you take us into a different time and space altogether so why but only trumpet and why not anything else more in focus if you could say <laughs> yeah uh, mainly because moza pai so that's like that i'm like sangta sangta lo ki like you take an instrument that's less taken take the road that's less taken mm-hmm. so and maka uh, forgot ek boy na so we both were raised like you know there was no difference between a boy and girl so for my father to maka so like to lokan so manta like logi sare da chedo na kare da well rose moza chedo like you know and well is also there So which is why I took up on a challenge to take trumpet because chor chodwa even ata basun chodwa chodwa zo na trumpet exactly. you know blowing instruments so chodwa kon na um so that was a challenge that I had to take you know first my father told me to do it and on that age sada sai kota so so through that the zana it trumpet gelli as a challenge and even now it's it's a challenge because um you know it's it's an ongoing journey Exactly because it's like you never reach to a, like you know an end point in music yeah. because you keep learning and constantly evolving about it. So uh, what is the like, major challenges that maybe you have come across you know when you are uh, in this journey of music of yours in your music life? Uh personally for me I think um something that I I'm still overcoming is uh, the discipline factor you know there are times when um I have failed to practice and and then the study sa trumpet was either then uh, say example if I can play for one hour what is I know got me by can do only 45 minutes mm-hmm. uh so personally for me the challenge has been uh, you know consistency and discipline and that's something that this year I've taken a note to mm-hmm. you know try to be better at and for me like my main challenge is myself you know uh, because I feel like if I can do better than I was yesterday then that's that's an overcoming a challenge indeed and also if you see a very close look at your uh, journey you as you said like you know you went with your dad so whenever somebody looks at you they must be having that expectation are you know you are a 
the daughter of uh, so and so. So does it, you know, the pressure works out to you anytime? Anytime it has come in front of you? Honestly, my dad is a way better singer than me. <laughs> Kantarani, like, he's way better. For me, uh, my my strength lies in my trumpet. I, I obviously write songs and all, but I don't have to sing so fast. I don't have to sing so fast. I don't have to sing so fast. Wow. You know, he's, uh, he is... I think you should know. tell the audience oh, your dad's name and who is he? <laughs> <laughs> he's become more popular than me now. Uh, his name is Avis Pereira. Avis Pereira, I want to say. And Toy uh, Katara Gota, as I mentioned, Toy YouTube Aru Ha. And uh, yeah, he's, he, I look up to him because there's no, there's no competition with my father. Indeed. No, but as it is always like that when you have a closer look, like, you know, that expectation level is somehow there for you. Yeah. So, is it difficult for you, like, you know, always, like, you know, you have to put, fit into the shoes of that sort? Oh, yeah, in it. It is, because my father is my biggest critique. So when I was growing up, his criticism got to me at a certain point. And uh, because for him, I told you, like, I was like the boy of the house. So he treated me like a boy. And uh, sometimes, uh, obviously, we girls are fragile. Like, I'm not saying, oh, no, but, you know, so th that way, yes, it did get to me. But then that also made me stronger. So there's no breaking from that. That's so nice. I like, I think uh, you're like kind of an inspiration to a lot of people. Uh, if you could also tell us about like, you know, when was the changing moment in your life when you said like, you know, this is it. I, you know, I want to take up this profession and I want to go ahead with this profession. I don't, to be honest, Mokanata, one moment. I cannot Any one moment, like, you know, in the initial days, like, you know, when you, you were not maybe in favor of becoming a musician, maybe earlier, but when was that one moment that you said, you know, this is it, from now on, it's just music and I'm with it? I think that was when I was seven years old. Wow, that was too early. <laughs> yeah, I started early. I think uh, my maturity came way early on compared to the other kids. I don't know why, but it just happened. Um, I think... Uh, there was the first time I was serious on Lele Dada Chabara Bar Kanta Runpak. That's Sobit Ga only that I was mentioning about. Uh, I was really nervous. I do have stage fright. Still date, uh, like, I do have stage fright. But I, like, it's it's where I belong, so I, I enjoy it. Mm -hmm. But uh, when I went on stage, I really, my performance was destroyed. Like, I really did a very bad performance. And a uh, lot of people, like, you know, were criticizing. They were making fun. and. I think my dad took that as a challenge mm -hmm. and then I followed my dad's steps and I took that as a challenge and I guess I proved them wrong. <laughs> Indeed you did, definitely. There's no doubt in that and I think uh, a lot of people watching you and have seen your videos I will definitely agree to that. I think you're doing a fantastic job. Thank you. There's a long way to go. I just, uh, I'm not fulfilled yet. I'm not even half fulfilled but um, I know I'm on the right journey. Well, Rose, now that, you know, we have discussed about how you got into this field, uh, could you please tell us about how was your childhood and what were the things that, you know, you have kept in mind, like, you know, while, you know, getting, not just getting into the field, but like, you know, how was your childhood? Was it too, you were a naughty child, you were like a very well-behaved child. How was it all about? I, uh, my childhood was, I was Zalde Goyant. Then, I was a kid, and I was a kid. And I think that was my grooming stage that really groomed me as a person. The reason why I'm so close to my Goan roots, uh, is because of my grandmother. Her, she really showed me what love was and what being a Goan was because I grew up with her. And then, I was a kid, and I was a kid. And um, I was a very tomboyish girl growing up. I still am. I'm, I'm very bubbly. Um, I believe in taking life one day at a time, you know. So I've always been that girl. And I feel like somewhere deep down, I have that child in me. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I was very bubbly. Was I naughty? Yes, extremely. I was very bad. I think she just got one slap that she still remembers. But I got, I got a lot of beatings. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that, that was my childhood. And then there was always the music because of my father. Yeah, and a lot of church. I used to go to church every day. I still do, but it's hard sometimes. But yeah, I, I want to continue that. Hopefully. Okay. So also when you see, like, you know, uh, in your uh, initial days, as you said, like you were more inclined towards music itself. So when you got your first tiat, that was also maybe a turning point in your life. And you said, like, you know, this is another thing that I'm more interested in. 
So when was that and what exactly was it all about? Okay, now I remember. Uh, <laughs> I know what you're asking me. The turning point in my life was when I was 16, I believe. Uh, I started for Prince Jacob. Mm -hmm. So it was the Jay Prachit Mujay. That was a turning point because uh, I was just a replacement. There was a girl, I think, named Sonia. Mm -hmm. uh, she fell ill. I had never acted before that. I was just singing. And I don't know what made him believe that I could do it. Um, so I auditioned and I did the role. Um, and people really loved it. Till this, this date, uh, people remember that role. Like this day for yesterday, I was recording at uh, Elfin A26. Antam Kaurungal, Tukoniti CD, VCD. They are, you know, Rolachi, and I was like, you know that I did that role, and that really touched me because uh, that was a turning point. Like then, I saw newspaper are really on, I don't need frame, kelly, I'm a German guy, and people started recognizing me, and it really felt good to be, you know, appreciated. And then I decided to go to Canada and pursue my, you know, theatre degree. Exactly. So now you have also studied, uh, as you mentioned just now, this yeah. thing professionally. So. A lot of people, you know, have uh, groomed themselves on the stage itself. Mm -hmm. So, and it's always when you uh, talk about this particular roles, it's always the improvisation that takes place on the spot. Mm -hmm. So, has it any time happened to you some last minute changes that was told to you? Of, co of course. I think uh, for me, I'm a firm believer that you learn in, on the job. Mm -hmm. You know, the reason why I did theatre was not because I knew that that's going to teach me. Of course, your education is a tool. It's it's your power that you hold. Mm -hmm. And never goes to waste. But I also did an education in theatre was because I knew that, um, you know, I, I would obviously learn more theory based. Practical, obviously, you have to learn on the job. Um, to answer your question, coming back is, you know, has there been change improvisation? Uh, yes, in in uh, be it in music, be it in acting, you have to be flexible. You have to be you know, ready to adapt to changes. You know, now we can see. Last minute. Last minute. <laughs> you can see it on Instagram itself. You know, yes. things are changing. You know, the reels that go viral are the reels that, uh, you know, creators, the content creators are, that have more creativity in them. Mm -hmm. You know, that they can put out reels that are more, uh, you know, catching to the eye. So you actually sit down and you plan out the reels and everything in your Instagram profile, or it's like, I felt like that and I just put it up and let's see how it turns out to be. So far, I used to feel like it, and I used to put it, put it up. But then now, you know, lately I've tried try, been trying to like understand the market and how people, you know, what people want. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, it's more you have to plan it, and uh, that's my goal in the future as well to like actually plan what I put out and to be more consistent. I think the consistency part is crucial here for me. Yeah. <laughs> Indeed. So also now, when you see your uh, numbers, a lot of people, uh, whenever they are on Instagram, numbers play a very important role. Yeah. I think uh, every social media executive will agree to me and as every artist will agree to me. So every morning, do you wake up and see, oh, today I'm 34K, oh, tomorrow I'm 35K. Does the number game bother you in any way? To be honest, it hasn't so far. No, it hasn't? No, but okay. I think that's a good and a bad thing as well because uh, it's a good thing because, you know, obviously you don't compete with anyone else. But it's a bad thing because I think when it doesn't bother you, you won't try to, to improve, it. improve it. Yeah. And that's what I, I have taken on a challenge that this year, um, I'm, it's not about me competing one one more than anyone else. I don't think that's the way life works. Life's too short for you to compete with anyone else. Uh, but I think if I can, I want to compete with myself and grow my number. I'm not happy with where I'm at. No, no, not yet. No, no, not, not, not even a bit. <laughs> okay, so, but I, I would say that I think you're doing a good job. And I think it, uh, having your followers grow organically was, is one of the best thing than having, you know, like, you know, you have your paid things and everything of that sort. So when you see people in this particular range of yours, you have a lot of competition as well, right? So does it bother you about, you know, you do you have like a eye on the other person who's doing work in the same field as you? Not necessarily because, again, my biggest competitor is myself. Uh, there's room for everyone, there's space for everyone in this field. And uh, I don't think you have to compete with someone else to be the top everyone has space you know it, it's if you compete with others i think that you lose that that creative process mm -hmm. and you start 
at the end of the day for me my biggest thing is to be a good person but did you have anybody like in your mind like you know i need to be a little bit better or i need to get there anybody of that sort has come to your mind in time soon uh if i if i would like to get somebody it would be chris potty uh he's a trumpeter and uh, of course it's going to take me years to get there mm -hmm. but that would be the son yes i would like to be at the level of shakira mm -hmm. uh but again it's uh, she's very talented i think she's taken her pain into she's turned her pain into such a beautiful thing mm -hmm. and you know she's extremely strong so i look up to those people and that's my competition hopefully sometime in the future definitely i think uh, you're doing an amazing job and uh, it will grow and i am uh, hopeful that it will grow and then maybe the next time when we meet you may may definitely reach a different level altogether <laughs> thank you i just hope i hope uh, i hope <laughs> so, uh well rose now that you know we have uh, discussed a lot a lot of things about uh, how to go about and what exactly are the things uh, that we have kept in mind about your life about your journey we saw a couple of pictures a couple of days back on your social media platform and i think it's gone viral <laughs> so the very cute moments that we have seen uh Could you please tell us about the new thing in your addition into your life? Are you talking about my music? <laughs> <laughs> I think everybody out here knows what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, I just got engaged um, on 17th of May, and uh, yeah, it's been it's been a special day for me, and uh, I finally feel like I find I found the right man. So yeah. <laughs> I don't know what else to answer. <laughs> no, I think uh, we saw those pictures and we were all very in that awe state of affair <laughs> when we saw it. And I said, congratulations on that, and uh, we wish you all the very best in your life. And on that note, what we're doing is we're going to head into uh, the rapid fire round. This is the most exciting segment of Gems of Goa, wherein I will ask you questions. You need to be very quick and very rapid. Uh, okay, so just brace yourself as we're going to begin the rapid fire round of season three of Gems of Goa. So you need to be very quick as we begin this rapid fire round. So you need to say one word for the following: love, Glenn, music. Go. Acting. Kunchi ko. Okay, cooking. My mom. Tiat. Aves. Football. I wonder why this question of football is come here. I don't <laughs> even. Know. I don't even know that. Okay, football. <laughs> Glenn. <laughs> Okay, so Veros, what you need to do now is that you need to sing uh, a song that comes to your mind uh, when I say the following names. Okay, Lona. Ravo yeta mo jan jo na stona, saru yeta rat ni do na stona, purma tu iravon zai na tomog tu zomog voi tomog tu zomog kori na stona. Wow. Oh okay. God, no, it's amazing. Uh, Hema said this. I. I think Blaine just told me a song which was uh, "Sopnant Futoile." Uh, I like the tune, so hopefully I'll cover it on the trumpet. Uh, I don't know the lyrics that well, but uh, it goes. Tan 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 taratam, taran tan taram. It goes something like that, but hopefully <laughs> it I'll will come it on, on the trumpet. trumpet. We'll get to see it on YouTube, I believe. So that's one thing that is there completely. Okay. Uh, the next person, Glenn Martins. I don't know why this song is there. Anyways, <laughs> one song that comes to your mind for Glenn. Glenn, yes, Glenn Martins. I don't know why this is there. This is some odd name that has come right now. It's still. We wonder why. Oh my gosh, I'm actually sweating. Ah, uh, <laughs> for Glenn. Oh my. I'm trying to find a funny one because he's really funny. Um. Is it is it a funny cone song? I don't know. Uh it does it is be concrete only. It can be any song whatever you want to sing. Well, Glenn and I kind of bonded over Goa, so I think I can sing my own song. Goa, Goa, hey Goa, Goa, oh Goa, Goa. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, quickly answer the following: Which would be the top three places that you would like to visit on your bucket list? Brazil, 
Portugal. And in this um, maybe Bali. Okay. There's no guesses with whom, but still. <laughs> okay. If you were the CM for a day uh, and could grant three things, that what would it be? Oh my gosh, this is a huge responsibility. Yeah, this is. I would take this actually seriously, but I've not thought about it because I've not thought of becoming a CM. Oh. Um, but if I would have to, I think. Um, I would call up Father Paul Max and talk to him about what changes he would like and probably implement that because I look up, look up to him. Uh, secondly, oh my god, this is so tough. I think I would grant the day as a holiday. Just, for, like, just like that, take a holiday because I think uh, a lot of people need rest. Okay. <laughs> and third, um, I would I would have an official music day. Official music day. I think currently it is celebrated in, as World Music Day. World Music Day, yeah. But I would have a go in official music day. Wow, that's something really nice. <laughs> okay, so if uh, a documentary film had to be made on your life, what would you name it? Go as trumpet girl. Wow. So I think a lot of people watching right now, we have a really nice name for the movie and uh, we have the actress with us. Would you like to act in your own uh, documentary film? Oh, definitely. I love acting. Yeah. We have an actress as well. So yeah, it's, uh, we are open for new plans <laughs> coming soon. So if not the things that you're doing right now, what would you be doing? If not what I'm doing right now? Um, what would I be doing? never thought about it no I I mean initially I wanted to do something in activism and all but it takes a lot of mental power a lot of mental strength and I look I salute the you know activist out there um, I think I'll, maybe I would be a police Wow um, okay uh, any particular uh, message that you would like to give to your younger self maybe a couple of like say seven years before this particular day <laughs> Okay, well, on that note, I think you did amazing on your rapid fire round, the maiden rapid fire round. Uh, uh, well, Rose, if you could just tell us uh, what exactly are your next maybe future plans and your message that you would like to give to your viewers watching you. Um, my next future plan is definitely to post more songs on trumpet. Um, I'm also working on a few songs of my own writing. Bore uh, but. Uh, most of it doesn't come out because for me to release a song, it, it I have to be 100% sure about it. And um, yeah, so you can expect a lot of uh, trumpet music coming out, uh, more consistency <laughs> and uh, a lot of more love content <laughs> this year, I think. <laughs> Indeed, indeed. Well, uh, any particular message, like we are just running short of time, but any particular message you would like to give to your viewers watching you? Uh, for all your support. Can uh, I like you know the love and appreciation I get? Uh, maybe I don't deserve it because I have to work extra hard. Um, but it really touches me when you know you'll come up to me, you'll say hi, you'll click pictures. I'm really humbled and um, it really means a lot to me. Uh, I've dreamt of this moment for ever since I was a little girl. I've always wanted to you know do something in music in performing and for people to appreciate and accept me, that means a lot to me. And and please support Go on music. artist support because I'm Koroz and uh, to bring up Go on music. So that's just, just my message. Yeah. Indeed, thank you so much Veros for taking time off and coming to our studio. It was great having you on the show. Thank you. Dio Barikura Alicia. Well, on that note we come to an end of this particular episode. Thank you so much for watching. Keep watching your favorite channel Prime. Keep watching Prime.